Tesla's actually smart summon could easily handle America's busiest parking lot, but this is Europe, which comes with several hardcore challenges we'll attempt to overcome in this video. We'll show you live how the most intelligent feature on our continent so far clashes with European regulations and limitations. However bad you think the situation is now, after seeing this video, you'll realize it's actually much worse. So is there any hope for Tesla's AI technology in Europe? Let's find out. To show Tesla's dominance in autonomous driving, we start with something no other car manufacturer can do. Unparking the car in reverse while simultaneously steering it in the correct direction. The Tesla intelligently backs up just enough not to hit the parked car right behind it, then shifts to drive and immediately starts driving while turning the wheel in the opposite way, just like an experienced human driver would. The car is doing all of this on its own with no one inside, we're just holding a button on our phone in the Tesla app which gives it permission to drive. Once the button is released, the Model 3 immediately stops, which is not what we want to do right now because we're in the way of another car also trying to back up from its parking space. Luckily, the Tesla confidently launches forward through the intersection but then violently stops. And this is the real showstopper, because due to EU regulations, actually Smart Summon has a limit of 6 meters per driving session, after which you have to set a new target on the map and restart the system. Then there are three other major reasons for when it stops. These are being cautious around pedestrians and other obstacles, and also a maximum of 6 meters of distance from you the remote driver and your smartphone. The biggest issue is that these distances are not being measured correctly and the actual performance requires you to literally walk beside the car at all times, just like we're doing right now. And finally, actually Smart Summon is geo-locked to work only in parking lots. But uh, can you override any of these limitations? Now you're going to see what happens if we try to escape. The car screeches to a stop again as if there's an invisible barrier right in front of it. This time, however, it didn't stop because it reached the maximum allowed distance, but because we got too close to the boundary of this parking lot and the system recognized that we were about to exit. Now we're in real trouble because we cannot initiate actually smart summon at all, not even to back up from this situation. So we have to resort to the good old dumb summon. You can see in the app that uh, below the go to target button, there are two arrow buttons and we're pressing the back button right now, which just makes the car go back. No intelligence, no steering, just what I suspect is some mild obstacle detection so that the car doesn't back up into something. This however gave us enough clearance to continue the fun with actually smart summon. Since we want to go to the right, the car fully turns its wheels to the right, then it proceeds cautiously forward looking both left and right if there isn't anyone coming our way and then proceeds forward before shifting to reverse doing our historically first three point turn in actually smart summon. After reversing for just a bit, it shifts back into drive and launches forward at 7 km per hour, which is pretty fast for this feature. And then we even get a few spectators, which reminds me to recommend to you to re-watch this video again and focus on people's expressions as they're watching us drive this crazy, crazy feature, which is even crazier by being nerfed by the European Union. This 6 meter session, however, I guess was even a little bit longer than that. Like I said, the distance calibration is far from perfect and sometimes it allows you to drive a bit further, while other times it requires you to be so close to the vehicle that the vehicle doesn't want to drive because you as a pedestrian are standing too close to it. 
now we're inching closer and closer to this pseudo intersection where we will see the first glimpses of intelligence of full self-driving either 12 or 13 that is actually doing the driving here under the hood the tesla would is the key word squeeze through this gap professionally to let this other car go but the eu the greatest showstopper of all let us sit through this really awkward situation fortunately our driver doesn't panic and reinitiates actually smart summon again getting out of the way of this frustrated driver this is a really interesting situation because there's a tow hitch of this truck dangerously close to our car, which actually Smart Summon avoids really nicely. But the side effect is that it scares this person who tried to overtake us and they have to suddenly stop. As they also overtake us, pay close attention to the right camera view inside the app. Just look at how close we got to the tow hitch. Yes, that's right, we're willing to put our own car in danger and all that we're asking in return is for you to just give us a quick thumbs up under the video. Thank you so much. I honestly can't believe we're running trying to catch up to a driverless car while being watched by more than 1000 subscribers and our last video even got over 60,000 views. That's just insane. Thank you so much for sharing, liking, commenting and all that. At this point, we're basically walking or riding circles inside the parking lot, proving that actually Smart Summon can handle mild obstacles and tight turns. It's steering perfectly, detecting random pedestrians and their shopping carts, but then BAM! Another forced stop. Why? Because the EU regulations keep the car operating in the cautious toddler mode rather than confident teenager mode. You can almost feel the advanced AI itching to go further. It's like having a marathon runner chained to a short leash. And here comes our next challenger. The gray car ahead of us is going to try to unpark and squeeze past us in this incredibly tight alleyway. The car to our right is protruding in our way and actually Smart Summon stays incredibly smooth and confident throughout this whole exchange. Even when another car tries to go past it, the only thing stopping it again is the European Union. Look at all this chaos. This really is the busiest parking spot in Europe. Specifically, Colin, Czech Republic. And to make matters worse, just a few days before Christmas. But so far, so good. Except we're having another problem. The car starts stopping too frequently because it thinks the phone is too far away. Determined to fix this issue, we try a different approach. Sit inside the Tesla while still using the actually smart summon button. And guess what? It works. Kind of. The phone is now well within the 6 meter radius, because it's basically in the driver's seat. But the Tesla app keeps telling us that it's still too far away, almost 6 meters, so the car is slowing down or stopping. This might be issue with location accuracy on your smartphone. Doesn't matter if it's an Android device or an iOS device. In our case, it was the Galaxy S24 Ultra. But when we looked into Android settings, we discovered that we actually had the most accurate GPS location on and it still didn't help. That's why we're gonna try to use another phone. But first, let's witness one of the most amazing moments in this video. I'm actively pressing the go to target button, but FSD, actually Smart Summon, is waiting for the cars to pass. It's actively giving them right of way. And only after they've passed, it continues to drive until it stops again because of EU regulations. But seriously, this was one of the clearest peaks of intelligence that lies within this system. We get stuck again, the app says that the phone is too far away, which again puts us in a really awkward situation because there are people waiting right behind us. But it then luckily proceeds, squeezes past a car going the opposite way, drives for just a bit before experiencing phone issues again, so then I readjust the target, press the button and the car waits for two pedestrians and continues on its way for a few meters anyway. 
By now it's clear that Samsung's performance isn't ideal, but we give it a few last chances. This situation is really complicated, with a pedestrian on the right, a car on the left, and this car that we dealt with last time protruding on the right. Actually, Smart Summon really smartly goes to the left a little bit to avoid this protruding car and then cautiously continues forward. Every time we stop because of the regulations, my heart shrinks just another bit further. We try to go forward and to the right again. Really, really sharp turning radius isn't a problem for actually smart summon and it executes the maneuver perfectly. And it almost goes the whole way to an 180 degree turn before stopping again. We decide to change directions and instead of going to the right, go forward instead, where another couple of cars is going to pose a challenge for us. Here, just to be sure, we actually aborted Smart Summon by releasing the button and letting this person pass before finally ditching the Samsung phone and instead switching to the Google Pixel 8 Pro, my own phone, which works with Tesla's actually Smart Summon much better as you're going to see right now. As we unpark, I'm going to try to overcome the EU limitation by stopping manually and then setting a new target. But unfortunately, even when I do stop manually by releasing the button and I set a new target, the maximum distance doesn't reset and I only go forward a few meters before stopping again. So this is not a viable strategy of overcoming this limitation, sadly. In the next session, we're heading towards our favorite intersection again, which is busy with both cars and pedestrians. We squeeze past the oncoming traffic without any problems and then this magical moment, Tesla lets this pedestrian go across even when there's no crosswalk. It's super polite and just lets them go before stopping due to regulations again. Now I'm going to fast forward this next section a little bit because I assume that you already know the drill. In the worst possible moment, Tesla actually smart summon stops because of regulations, then it goes forward six meters again, then it stops right at this intersection and then we have to reinitiate again. Some car squeezes past us on the left without any problems. We go around the same circle we did last time and almost finish this maneuver again, stopping because of regulations. And then I get a completely new idea. You see, actually Smart Summon doesn't only have go to target mode, it also has the more frequently used, at least in the US, come to me mode. So I exit the car with the Google Pixel phone in my hand and attempt to summon the car to myself. But here's where it breaks, because the phone is again, allegedly, more than six meters away. But when I get closer to the car, then it says that, yeah, you are already close enough to the car that you don't need any summon. So summon complete. <laughs> and there is no middle ground between these two error messages. Either you're too far away to use, come to me, actually smart summon, or you're so close to the car that the app assumes you don't need it at all. I also tried going behind the car and it still didn't come to me. So this is something that doesn't work in any way just due to these regulations. And I think we should seriously consider somehow reaching out to these politicians either on X, let them know that this is complete and utter nonsense. The EU is crippling something that could actually be useful and groundbreaking for so many people. FSD is technologically ready for Europe, for Russia, for the whole world. And it's apparent from this footage right here. <laughs> Two pedestrians come so close to us that 
actually smart summon slows down all the way to zero just to be sure that it doesn't hurt them and then it enters the main road on the way to the exit. Now we come to the ultimate test. Can we coax the car onto a public road, even just a few meters past the parking lot boundary? Watch the video till the very end to find out. I promise you, it's going to be worth it. Now, I'm going to speed up the sections where we are stopped by EU regulations and just allow you to watch the actual driving parts and enjoy them fully, at least while they last. What makes this whole regulation situation even worse is that actually smart summon isn't even a standard feature on Teslas. You have to have at least enhanced autopilot, which costs something like $4,000 here in Europe. And that's quite a steep price point for something that barely works. This begs the question, is enhanced autopilot worth buying? Well, if you're expecting a driverless valet that meets you at the curb of a busy street, not in Europe, not right now. If, however, you'd love to impress your friends in a quiet parking lot, showing how your car can basically unpark itself in reverse, a bragging right no other brand offers, it might be worth it. Plus, if or when the EU finally loosens these constraints, your Tesla will be ready to take advantage of the more advanced FSD features already baked in. And that's the real kicker. Tesla's FSD is technically ready for global roads. It's just stuck in a regulatory straitjacket. Until that changes, your actually smart summon will remain mostly a polite party trick. A taste of what Tesla's AI can really do once it's unleashed. So what do you think? Would you still pay extra for the promise of a semi-autonomous future? Or is this EU nerf too big of a turnoff to justify the cost? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoy this peek behind the curtain of Tesla's restricted genius, smash that like button and hit subscribe. Because once Tesla is finally allowed to really stretch its wings, you'll want a front row seat. Unfortunately, we are stuck and can't get on the main road, but at least no one's shouting curses at us, unlike our first Actually Smart Summon video, which you can go watch right now. It's the most hardcore interaction we've had so far. I definitely recommend you to check it out. And remember, in Europe, your Tesla is just one firmware update away from blowing your mind. Until next time.